Your Creative Push, episode 37. I think it's just a case of just going ahead with it and doing it and not pondering it for too long, but just seeing where it takes you and committing to a regular practice. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I am your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Nick Gentry. Nick is an artist from London who paints on recycled and obsolete technological materials such as floppy disks, 35mm film negatives, VHS cassettes, and x-ray prints. In doing so, he creates a conversation between digital and analog processes. Now, Nick, what I love about your work is that it it really says something. Like, it's not just painting on floppy disks (laughs) just because it looks cool, um, which it really does, (laughs) but you kind of realize that it's not just about what you're painting, but the actual medium on which you paint. Like, like the canvas is telling just as much of a story to the viewer as the painting is. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, to me, I'm, I'm really interested in the materials. Um, so to me, the subject is actually formed through those materials. Um, the portrait that I paint on top of it is a kind of way to deliver it. It's um, the vehicle. So in a sense, you could look at it as a kind of, a subversion of of the traditional portrait um where you know the canvas would be the vehicle and then you'd paint the subject on top of it so um it's like inside out or reverse painting of, of the normal portraiture yeah it, to me it all just comes from the history and time uh looking at old materials and finding charm and sort of life in things that have had a, a life already and a kind of use uh, and that usage has kind of come to its end of its intended life uh, but it doesn't mean the end for that actual thing it's it's more like uh, how do we redefine it uh, how do we find a new life for it uh where do you actually obtain the like the floppy disks obtaining the materials is quite a key part really i started off by just sourcing them from friends and what have you and then lately it's it's become more of a open collaborative process with people that i've never even met people from all around the world uh, it, it just it came about from people's enthusiasm for what I was doing. I, they were kind of seeing this old stuff, and they were just thinking, "Well, I've got some of those things somewhere in my attic or or wherever stored away." And every, we all share this need where we don't want to waste things, actually. And and um, it just just came from everyone's enthusiasm wanting to get involved. So I just kind of cultivated that into a working practice, and just said, you know, I just opened it and just said. The each new painting is not going to start with me anymore. It's going to start with other people and their history. And uh, I'm going to combine all of those things and just see where it takes me. And I just kind of encouraged people as I went to kind of participate more. And everything came together at the right time, really, because this was the time when social media was just starting to take off. And I really used that as a tool. And I just thought to myself, well, this is something that hasn't really been done too much in art before. So why not... Um, try it and, and see what, what happens if we just uh, kind of encourage this process. Yeah, for sure. And I think even if somebody hadn't contributed materials, like when I was looking at it, I felt like I was a, a part of it, even though I know that none of my floppy disks <laughs> in the past, I'm 30 now. Yeah. So um, I remember backing up my old Macintosh computer and you'd have to insert one floppy disk and then two minutes later it asks for disk two, like floppy disk two mm-hmm. you'd insert that and then like after you're done yeah. at 60 and an entire day you yeah. finally backed up your whole computer i don't even know how much memory that is certainly less than one gigabyte <laughs> of of memory with everything um so it kind of at looking at your stuff it made me feel like um what if one little bite of my former life was like a part of this, this piece? And I, I really feel like it's an awesome way to, to connect in that manner. Yeah. I, I sort of deal a lot in the world of ambiguity. Um, and that's the idea to keep everything open. And it's, it's basically for the viewer to interpret in their own way. And I, I wouldn't try and prescribe a certain way to look at the work or to say that this, you know, particular piece belonged to somebody. I, I mix everything together. And uh, I leave it as a mystery uh, for people to kind of, you know, make of it what they will and bring their own experience and their own feelings to it. Because it's at the end of the day, the whole thing is shared right from the start. So that that allows for that, really, that that kind of feeling. Yeah, I love that. And um, I have to ask, when did you start doing this? Like, what could you maybe take us back to like the first time you decided to kind of do this off of uh, recycled materials? 
Yeah, um, sure. I, I was doing a lot of things with stencils. I was working in a really simple way with canvases and stencils. And I was just trying to find a way to be different with that. Um, and I was just walking around in the streets in London, just leaving them on the street for people to pick up. It was the, the simplest thing, really. For free? Yeah, free. Yeah, I was just doing it as a way. I didn't have gallery representation. and I was just wandering around. And that was my way to kind of do something a little bit different and just to try and get my things out there. I was just conducting a series of experiments, really, about what to do with my art. And that was just one way I started with it. And, you know, I suppose when you're walking around on the street, you're seeing a lot of rubbish and things that have been discarded as you walk around. Mm -hmm. Um, And that may have inspired me, I think. It's quite hard to really put your finger on, actually, inspiration and say, ah, there's the moment, because... Personally, I, I find that these things are quite iterative and they, they take a long time to um, kind of simmer away in the background over years. And, and really, it, you could go back to even my childhood where I spent a load of my you know youth just playing on computer games and stuff and using these discs and just sitting indoors all day playing these games with my brother sure. uh, when it was actually quite sunny outside or, or probably not actually here in England, but um, still <laughs> wasting, if you like, uh, a lot of my youth, but it's still at the same time enjoying it um, and actually forming a bond with these materials. Um, so, yeah, you could say that it came simmering up from the past and then just reformulated it into my current life and seeing the things that are happening today I suppose you could say we've experienced in our lifetimes um, digital revolution. And uh, to me, that seemed like the biggest change that's happened in uh, human history. So well worth commenting on and being inspired by. Um, And it seemed like a really simple way to kind of um, sum it up or to make a comment on it. But like I say, putting a finger on an exact moment is pretty much impossible for me. I've got lots of sketchbooks and things like that. If I looked through, I could probably find uh, traces of ideas and really messy notes and things like that but um it tends to be a slow burn really with these ideas sure and then that kind of goes with the idea of i don't know memories are they're hard to put a finger on just like the technology kind of like it's especially as you said we're, we're in the middle of a, a digital revolution but when you're right in the middle of it it's it's hard to kind of appreciate it and i think that your art really does that like when was the last time people thought about floppy disks until they they saw your work but the floppy disk used to be like the main form of of technology you know and it's it's interesting because your cell phone's your life and it's it's in your pocket every day and i feel naked when i don't have my cell phone but then when i get a new cell phone this this little my old cell phone is just i don't even know where they are if they're in the garbage or like in a shoebox somewhere it's funny how you just kind of once you move on to the next thing you just discard the old technology Exactly. Yeah, it's a good way to put it, really. I mean, we, we, we live in the moment, and that's a good thing. But I um, mean, I think I, I find myself, I'm quite a reflective person. So I, it's really hard to have a perspective in the moment, because we're surrounded by so much that's just stimulating us all of the time these days. So um, it's only in time, that's the benefit of time, really, that we can actually reflect on what happened, and uh, what it means in a way, what time gives that perspective where it fits into who we are and what we're doing and it um that really helps in that way um so it's kind of one of the benefits of getting older i think you can actually uh formulate it how is it affecting my life where does it all fit into the the scheme of things really yeah that's one of the benefits but also (laughs) one of the drawbacks of time is how fast it seems to go the older you get yeah it's all relative isn't it i think each it's to me it's um it's not like counting each year, but each year is more like a percentage of your life. So that's kind of explains how it's getting quicker uh, because a, a year is, is actually not much to me in, in respect to the amount of time that I've lived already. But for someone that's very young, a year just seems like ages because I suppose they haven't had many years in the past. That's very true. I never really thought about it that way. The percentage of your life. Yeah. Mm. Where do you kind of predict um, we're going with in regards to time and technology? Where, what do you kind of see in the future for us? Um, it's very hard to predict the future right now because of all these changes that are actually happening exponentially now. Um, I hope we don't get lost. I mean, it's uh, we, we seem to be gathering more and more technology and more and more data and merging it with ourselves. We're obviously organic beings, but we're becoming more... I mean, I think that that actual uh, dream of becoming cyborgs is becoming a reality mm-hmm. now. Like you say, you can't leave your phone 
I mean, I can't leave mine. It's I'd like to, and I have done at times, and I felt actually a, a lot freer mm-hmm. and nice, nicer when I do leave it. Um, yeah, so I think it's probably approaching a stage where we're going to start integrating technology into our bodies um, more and more. So we've got the watch, um, but I think that's going to become more you know, internal. Uh, it's just a case of managing all the data that's out there and, and not being shackled by it, but actually liberated by it instead of instead of what uh, the, the negative possibilities. Um, I think it's more to do with consciousness and managing what we've got and what we've created. And I think that's where art comes in because it does help us reflect and to kind of feel it really, rather than uh, just head down, you know, and just firing ahead with all the the technology that we've got. It, it just helps us to uh, to gauge where we're at and what we want to do with it all, and and who are we? Because it does affect our identity as you know, as human beings. With art and my work, especially, I'm not trying to provide any answers or predictions. I'm just trying to ask better questions than I than was before really yeah I'd, I'd agree completely and you're right i think it is important to just kind of you know stop and think for a while before you as you said kind of go down that road look around and take a deep breath and see what what you're in the midst of um so i think that art in general and your art um really does a good job of that oh thanks yeah um, could we talk about some things that maybe hold you back on a daily basis from actually completing art if you need to get something done? What are some things that maybe hold you back? Um, I think it's probably related to what we've been saying. It's distractions as well in life. Um, it's it's quite a difficult one because I, I don't find too many things holding me back because I'm quite disciplined with it now and I naturally have an enthusiasm for what I'm doing. So I think whenever you just follow your passion, you just have the intuition to work when you need to work and you, you find your time of day when you're kind of optimal and you work at those times, then the limitations are quite few and far between, really. You know, it's all, uh, it's, it's basically a suspension of judgment when you're working on it. So I kind of just work on these things. And if it, if it goes wrong, then it goes wrong. And then, you know, that's, that's just a fact, you know, it happens to a lot of artists where you have to abandon a piece or whatever happens. Um, but it doesn't happen too often to me. I see things as more of a sequence rather than endpoints. So, you know, if that painting didn't work out, then that's not a problem to me because it's just a, a step on, on a long road, really. I know a lot of people probably would struggle with what you just said, though. How do you kind of not get over that? But um, how do you kind of ignore not necessarily a failure, but how do you see it as not necessarily a waste of time? Because um, I, I think it's your your view on on what you think art is for or why you're doing it. Because um, we all come through a similar sort of education system in the West, and mm-hmm. it's very much it's sort of rooted in academic um, subjects and and this whole system of is it correct or incorrect, and that works okay for things like maths, but it really doesn't apply for art and you know, we have to sort of grade our school and just, you know, get people through exams or maybe we actually don't, but that's just the system that we have and that's what everyone gets used to. So the amount of people that I meet that say, oh, I can't do art, I can't, and all of this stuff, it's all to do with the technique. But for me, it's not, it's it's about expression. So it, it depends on your starting point. If your starting point is I need to do this painting and it needs to be right, it needs to be kind of correct, then I don't know how you could ever sort of, win that game but if you're doing it because you 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 want to express yourself and you you just have this feeling that you want to put across and just enjoy it and have fun with it then then that's something you can never lose then yeah so it's more about the enjoying the everyday the enjoying the actual doing of it which i think is the entire reason to do art as you said yeah and i think in this case we can learn from children uh they, when you watch them drawing and and painting and doing what they do, they they're not thinking of it as as we do as adults. Where they're not thinking, oh, is this right or wrong? They're just enjoying it and having fun with it. And and I think that's that's pure art. That's real creativity. Um, so you can learn from everyone, I think, in life, and especially children. So for them, I th- I think they've got it right in that respect. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got it right about a lot of things. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not they're not. Um... I don't know. They're not as inundated with all this, all this crap that we have to that you have to deal with as an adult, and like this thing like money and you know where we're going and political issues and agendas. It's just more about living. So I I, I love that advice. Yeah, and I think it's a key. It's like I mean, it's almost trite to say, but 
it's about balance. Uh, so it's having that kind of enthusiasm and the passion and retaining that and also being aware of the world we live in and trying to reflect on that and trying to find a meeting point where that all comes together. I'd say that pretty much sums it up, that, that kind of in-between phase, trying to be a child but in an adult way and not kind of uh, starving and, you know, not paying the rent and things like that. You, that you obviously, we have a day-to-day responsibility where we do have to be adults, but it's just trying to um, take away all the layers of crap that build up over the years and just having fun with art. Yeah, and I think um, some people do get lost in that. Um mm. I think everybody still has that kind of childlike wonder and they do think about these things, but they're afraid to kind of share it because nobody else um, in their normal everyday life is sharing it. And while they might like artists like you on Facebook and they might appreciate your work, I feel like a lot of people might be scared to share their own artistic thoughts or their own like actual thoughts about the world. What kind of words of encouragement would you give to them to kind of bravely share what they think? Yeah, um... Uh, it's, for me, it comes naturally because I was encouraged at a young age to just to do it. Um, so to picture it from somebody else's angle, I suppose there's nothing to be scared of. From my point of view, there's there's a lot of things that I've put out there into the world that have been terrible. And I look back on it and it's it's not good in a sense, like it's not good art or whatever. But, you know, there's no actual rule book there's nobody to say this is good and this is bad so i think what it is is suspending judgment uh just working on something for the enjoyment of it and then putting it out there sharing it with other people you know one person's going to like it or something's going to happen to somebody it's going to make them think something or feel something rather i think it's just a case of just going ahead with it and doing it and not kind of uh pondering it for too long but just just seeing where it takes you and committing to a regular practice as well yeah, just saying, screw it. Who cares what people think and just kind of putting it out there. I agree. Yeah, it's sort of like you have to be very attached to the work while you're working on it and be very committed to it. But I, I learned this process um, quite early on when I, with my art. It, it's just a case of being very attached to it. And then when it goes out of my studio, I then have to detach from it. It's not me. It's just something that happened, something that I've touched or been involved with. The, the key part about the regular practice is that you can move on to the next piece and then your your attention is focused on the next thing rather than looking back for too long at, at things you've done a while ago and just worrying whether that's going to have an effect or if people are going to like it or not. It's the key thing is to just to keep going because you are going to improve if you keep going. Yeah, that's something that a few people I've interviewed have also said is kind of, you know, I've asked them, like, how long did you embrace the thing that you just created? Like, how long did you like appreciate it? And they said, the next day they moved on to the next thing. I think that's a <laughs> that's a really hard thing to do. I think for me, I have a case of like postpartum depression, almost <laughs> like when I'm done with the thing, like, I need to enjoy it for a while before I move on to the next thing. Definitely. And that took me a while to cultivate that. I, I do remember that being a challenge, actually, to say, to let go of things because occasionally you'd paint something that you really like and you think this is good I want to keep this one or you know whatever yeah that breaks down you can just keep going with it and um, you just flush through those kind of feelings and you it's relentless but you know you, you get some different enjoyment because you you instead have a momentum and you actually improve as an artist and that's worth a lot more than hanging on to like favorite pieces that have come and gone and, and these days as well you can photograph it and put it online and at least you have a kind of visual to kind of remind you of the things that you've done well or you can look back on things but um you don't want to kind of linger i mean my house i don't have any of my paintings in my house i don't kind of need things lingering around it's for me it's all about moving forward onto the next thing Yeah, I love that idea. And the other thing about um, keeping it for too long or like looking at it for too long is you start to, the more you look at it, the the more you start to see the cracks and the imperfections in it. And then you want to go back and fix it and and, then you'll never get it done in that case. Exactly. And it's as much about physical space because, I mean, these cities that we live in are expensive and, you know, renting a space is quite expensive. So you can't really afford to have lots of things in your studio and need to keep it efficient these days i mean it's different years ago but now it needs to be moving forward at a momentum you need to clean things out physically but there's also a mental clear out with that as well mm. and so in order to create something new you need to clear a space for that mentally so you can come up with new ideas and new work yeah clearing <laughs> spring cleaning yeah <laughs> your brain <laughs> <laughs> um you mentioned before that you you had some things that you put up that uh 
<clears throat> you said were bad. I'm sure they were awesome, <laughs> but in your in your head they were bad. Um, could you maybe take us back to one of your worst moments creatively? I I mean I don't linger. It's to me I I've had many moments. There's just stuff where I've created where it's just not worked or I felt like in a rut. Um, but like I say, I don't linger too long on anything. So the benefit of that on the other side is that you, uh, you don't get stuck in those ruts for too long because you're in this relentless flow and you're going on to the next thing before you know it. So for me, I, it's really hard to recall anything that's been a disaster or, or anything sort of long term. Um, there's tons of stuff that's gone wrong with the experiments and the materials that I'm using. Um, but and that feels stressful at the time and it's expensive and it's a, sometimes it feels like a waste of time. But the more experienced I get, the more I realize that nothing is really wasted because you're learning each time. And, and maybe you can recall some of those things and bring them in as a, a technique to merge with something else that comes later on. So I think it's all about perspective, really. I mean, if, if there's a problem at the time, it's, it is a problem, but you know, in a in a year's time or a few months or whatever it's not it's just something that happened an event so i don't really have anything that i can recall that's i i sort of deem to be a, a bad moment that's good and uh <laughs> i think your mentality is something that uh we should all strive for is, is to not get caught up in all the negativity that we bring on ourselves yeah sure mm-hmm. how about how about a best moment nick do you have a like a really triumphant creative moment that you remember um, I think it's probably the the chance that to do this New York show that I've got coming up in the summer. So it's going to be my first solo show in New York. And that's at the C24 Gallery? That's right, yeah. Um, and so to me, that feels like a, a big step and it's, it's something I really am looking forward to doing. So, yeah, I mean, you get these moments along the way. So I've had a London show, I've had a show in Miami, show in Belgium and... Uh, different places but um this to me would be a a pretty a big marker uh yeah and i just want to do the best i can for it as well so um i guess my best moment could be ahead of me hopefully hopefully it will be (laughs) good i mean that's awesome (laughs) yeah i mean i'm sure that you'll have many best moments uh in the in the future yeah i hope so Mm -hmm. um do you have like a greatest inspiration or maybe the better question is um like kind of what do you draw inspiration from to me, um, inspiration comes from everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. It, I mean, you could say nature if you look around at the universe and what have you. It's just how you perceive it and how you gather it together. I think that's really inspiration. So it's a case of are you open to these things and are, and how are you taking things in? Is your head down? Are you looking at your phone all the time just seeing what's on there? Or are things happening around you that are striking a chord with some of your interests and passions and things that from your childhood and history and whatever else and and how is it all gathering together inside of you and creating feelings and um inspiration is is something really hard to define for me but i feel like uh it's quite a mysterious thing and i'm happy about that i I think it's it's about, about embracing that emotion and that mysterious kind of element to it i don't know i look at i like people that just step outside of their kind of category if you like so an artist like Leonardo da Vinci is incredible because he just wouldn't be defined as an artist he went across and you know he was like a into biology and all sorts of things and science and maths and he just looked around and it just was inspired by everything he and he questioned everything as well he wouldn't be sort of told about the way things work he would actually go ahead and find out for himself and uh, I think I, I can understand what that means because at school I was a bit of a nightmare with the teachers because I'd always want to kind of (laughs) I would always want to um, question everything that they said which is kind of annoying for them because they want to just tell you about how things the way things work but for me art can't be that art has to be uh, a personal exploration so it's a case of just questioning everything and that that in itself is a form of inspiration because there's so many things all around us. It's just overwhelming. You you know, it's, it's what your slice on that, your, your take on, on all those things would be. Yeah, I think it's a very personal thing, inspiration, really. Uh, but, but time, for sure, is one, one way to look at things as well. And that's what I find quite inspiring. Because to me, it's a completely unknown entity. 
I mean, we try to explain time um, with science and all of those things, but I, I just think we're very far away from being able to like crystallize what it is. So to me, it's a mystery and I'm happy to kind of ask questions about it and use it in my work. Yeah, we're not only far away from it, but we're like, I think too small to even understand what it is. Like, I think our place in the universe is like so tiny that we define time around what what it is for us. But I think that we're just like this one tiny fractal part of, of time. I could talk for hours about time, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I could. I mean, it, it's... We, we have really no idea and, and and some people are quite unsettled by that and they want to know they want a concrete world to live in but for me it's anything but that it's just full of change and and I don't think we understand the first thing about it there's a lot of theories about things and, and they, they all seem to make sense from our point of view but that is only our point of view like you say it's it's <laughs> that can't be the whole universe it's only um, a very small viewpoint I think so and that's nice to me. That's that's great. I feel completely comfortable with that because that's what's where we're at. That's what it is. So um, I think the only sensible and rational way is to look at it and say, look, we don't know, but let's try and explore it and ask questions about it. Absolutely. And as I said, uh, I could talk about this forever, but we yeah. are running out of time. Sure. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask you to do what we call our final push. And this okay. is where, where I ask you to to reach through the microphone and to grab the shoulder of somebody you've already inspired today and to give them that final push into doing their creative passion. Okay. Well, I think for your, to, to push you with your fine, with your passion is to, um, to make sure that you are unique. If you're unique, you're going to stand out from everyone else. Um, once you found out what it is that makes you unique, you can then create a process around that and work in a sort of flow. Um, and then don't forget to share uh, what you have because everyone's going to be receptive to it and grow from what you have to share. And then probably the last thing to say is just question everything because the world is not black and white and uh, just retain that sense of mystery and wonder. Be unique and share. I like it. Yep. And you can find Nick on his website at nickgentry.com or on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Nick Gentry Art. And uh, also you can check out his website to make sure you check out his show in New York City this summer at the C24 Gallery. Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Thank you. Thanks. A uh, huge thank you to Nick for coming on the show. Um, really an awesome conversation. And I always appreciate when I can talk to somebody about how crazy our existence is uh, with time, technology, and humans place within it. And I really can appreciate that idea of, you know, once a piece leaves your studio, just kind of forgetting about it and, you know, being super involved with it while you're working on it, kind of adoring it. But then once it leaves, kind of seeing it as like this, this thing that you were a part of, but is no longer a part of you. It can really help you to move on with your art, to move on to the next thing and not hang on to it for too long. I do think it is important, as Gwen Seymour mentioned uh, in a previous episode, to stew in the self-love, since we stew in the self-doubt and the self-hatred um, so much, to really uh, appreciate you know, this thing that you just accomplished, but at the same time, you need, do need to figure out a time to move on to the next thing and kind of push your past projects um, out of your mind in order to move forward. Just some time for some iTunes ratings and reviews shout outs. ETZ1970 said, Great show. I love the conversation and inspiration. Creativity needs support. D. Colvey said, Great podcast. This podcast has really inspired my creativity. Jonah Trainer said, The humor is great. Uh, I'm glad that you appreciate <laughs> the self deprecating humor. Uh, Jeremy Slate said, As a creative myself, I really appreciate the inspiration that this show provides. Totally awesome. Keep it coming. And David Speck said, fresh and honest, this podcast is such a refreshing approach with a hefty helping of reality. Thank you all for your five-star ratings and reviews on iTunes. As as you know, it helps this show so much. And if you haven't yet, um, I would appreciate it if you could take just a moment to give us a rating and review. Uh, it will help us in the rankings on New and Noteworthy. We still have a couple weeks left, and it would be great for a lot of new people to see the podcast. On tomorrow's show, we have Kent Gustafson. Striving for perfection has to have failure in it. I think that was, you know, a mistake I made early on a couple times or many times. 
but you have to, you can't live on top of Everest. You, you, you climb up the mountain, you hang out there for like minutes or however long those guys are up there, and then you come back down. You, you can't live up there. That's, you know, perfection is hitting the top of Everest. You can't live in perfection. I found Kent through his really inspiring and touching TED talk that he did about creativity. And when I asked him to come on the show, it was an instant yes for him. And we had a really great conversation about creativity and all of its forms. You definitely don't want to miss it. But that's tomorrow for you. Hopefully today you were inspired enough to get your work done uh, and to push forward with your creativity, uh, whatever it may be. Thank you as always for listening and for your support and for subscribing and you know continuing to listen every day. Uh, it really means a lot to me and I love this kind of family that we're starting to create. So go and get some quality work done, and I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow.